Hello, doubters. CNN anchor Don Lemon echoes some thoughts I bet you have had as well. God is not about hindering people or even judging people. I want to walk through Don's comments carefully with truth as our North Star and see if he is correct. Welcome to Dealing with Deconstruction. If you find yourself questioning some of your deepest held beliefs and wondering if you can hold on to your Christian faith, you are in the right place. This is a safe place where we will examine the questions that people on the same journey ask, and we will look for the truth. If you feel lonely and ask many bigger than life questions, please consider subscribing. Also, consider shooting me an email with some of your story. Today, we are looking at uh, some comments that Don Lemon made on the judgment of God. I want to start by saying that as I listen and respond to his comments, I am in no way attacking Don personally. I think what he says here are things that many of us want to believe about God. We are after what is true. And the lens that we are going to look at his comments from is the lens of truth. Don made the following comments on the view in light of the Catholic Church saying that they could not bless same-sex marriage. Now, Don is engaged to another man, and he is giving his reaction to the Catholic Church's statements. Listen, I respect people's right to believe in whatever they want to believe in their God. But if you believe in something that hurts another person that, or that does not give someone the same rights or freedoms, not necessarily under the Constitution because this is under God, uh, I, I think that that's wrong. He presents this idea that harm is the standard by which we evaluate something as right and wrong. I think this is a loose adaptation of the golden rule in Luke 6, as we see here on the screen. I don't want someone to harm me, and so I shouldn't harm others. If what I'm doing is harming others or restricting rights, in Don's words, it is wrong. And God wouldn't want us to do what is wrong. So God wouldn't want us to harm others. The logic seems pretty sound here. But I think this needs to be flipped on its head. First, we start with God. What does God say is right? That is our measure of what is right and wrong. Also, I think harm is defined too broadly here. I'm thinking of the story of Jesus and the woman at the well. Jesus points out to her that she has been living out of alignment with God's will. He does this in a straightforward way. I am sure if someone has pointed something like that out to you, it was painful. But because her heart was changed, she listened to Jesus and made some hard changes in her life. Telling your partner that the relationship is over because it is not of God hurts, but it was the right thing for her to do. But there are limitations to rights and freedoms under God. We just looked at one from Jesus's own words, and we will look at many others in other videos. But I hope you understand that the grid that Don is using here, while on the surface is really appealing, flips God's morality upside down. It starts with our feelings of harm and works back to what is good, when it should begin with God's perfect, loving, moral law, and we should apply that to our life. Let's continue with the next clip. The Catholic Church and many other churches really need to re-examine themselves and their teachings because that is not what God is about. God is not about hindering people or even judging people. I can sympathize with Don's statements here. To be told that a message that God hates this or that you are a sinner for doing that and that you shouldn't live like that can feel crushing. Like the world is closing in on you and you just want to be for one second without the weight of judgment. Have you ever felt like that? Leave a yes in the comments if that is a feeling that you can relate to. But we need to examine Don's claim here. If we look at the major three religions in the world right now, there is a God who judges throughout their history. Even Don is making a judgment about what God would or wouldn't do. 
With truth as our North Star, let's look at what is being said. I want to hone in on the idea of God not being about hindering or judging people. And we will get to Jesus' statement in Matthew 7 in our last clip, but let's talk about hindering for just one second. I want to look at three verses. Romans 8.21 says that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. In Galatians 5.1, it says, For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. And lastly, in 2 Corinthians 3.17, it says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Freedom. Being unhindered, as Don said. God is about freedom. I want to affirm that. But I think the Bible and Dawn mean different things by freedom here. Dawn seems to be saying that God wouldn't hinder us from doing what we want. We are free to act as we please as long as it doesn't harm anyone. But the Bible talks of freedom in Christ. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. We will only truly be unhindered when we are free from sin, free from the flesh's selfish desires, and hold fast to Jesus. And sometimes that means that we feel hindered. We aren't able to do some of the things that we want to do. And I will admit that this is hard. But I want to say that when the temptation is too much, and you have a misstep, as I do, and everyone watching this does, that you aren't alone. That we need to then confess that to someone, ask for forgiveness from God, and continue to walk with Jesus. There's a lot more that I could say, but I do want to get to this third clip. So I would say to the Pope and the Vatican and all Christians or Catholics or whomever, whatever religion you believe out, you, you happen to belong to out there, Go out and meet people and try to understand people and do what the Bible and what, what Jesus actually said, if you believe in Jesus, and that is to love your fellow man and judge not lest ye be not judged. So instead of having the pew hinder you, having the church hinder you, instead of being segregated in the church or among yourselves, go out and have a barbecue and meet people. There are two topics here. I want to affirm one and I want to look closely at the other. The first topic is to get out and meet people. Yes, Don, I completely agree. Go meet your neighbors. Have a cookout with them. Get to know them, no matter who they are, where they are from, what their skin color is, or who they love. Go meet them. Jesus modeled this for us, and I honestly don't know if we hear this enough in our churches today. Go meet them. But then Don quotes Matthew 7, Judge not that you be not judged. For with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. But Jesus isn't teaching us to be undiscerning or to abandon our critical faculties of judgment altogether. He is calling us to judge rightly, Christians are commanded to judge between right and wrong. How could we follow the commands of Jesus if we couldn't judge or discern? How could we settle a dispute between believers or choose a 1 Timothy 3 leader or follow Paul's example here in 1 Corinthians 5? The example of a fellow church member, or judge if others are believers following Paul's commands in 2 Corinthians 6.14. Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers, for what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness, or what fellowship has light with darkness? Jesus says that we have to remove the plank from our own eye before dealing with the plank in our brother's eye. There but, but there is a, a clear implication that we should still deal with the plank in our brother's eye after we deal with ours, 
Now, now the counter argument here might be that because we all sin in some way, that we can't call out anyone else's sin, that we have a giant plank in our own eye, and so we should just live and let live. And while that seems to be a recipe for harmonious Christian living, it robs us of the opportunity to sharpen each other as iron sharpens iron. There is a context for expressing judgment of a brother in Christ. Grounding potential harsh words in a loving, trusting, mutually sharpening relationship within a church family is the most appropriate one I can express. When an internal message rooted in love is heard by outsiders, robbed of its loving context, the message can get distorted. And I will be the first to admit that Christians have failed at times to love well. And I want to repent for any part that I had in that. If Don's words resonated with you, I hope that I gave you a, a, a way to lovingly look at them through the lens of truth so that we can put one more board back in your construction project of Christianity. I want to invite you to a loving Facebook community that uh, I just want you to be aware of. And no matter where you are on your journey, to join that Facebook group. The link is in the description. In the words of my friend Bobby Conway, doubt towards faith. See you next time, doubters, as we deal with deconstruction.